it's Judith, it ain't no good, I guess. Yeah, yeah huh? no, sure. What is uh, a young lady, a uh, friend of yours, said tell you hello. Mm. <laughs> what? You uh, say you know, a young no lady. Right for all. We don't own tell her, tell her the hell on that. <laughs> <laughs>
there's going to be a, a legislation introduced. This is one of the MEC's proposals to create a county unit system, uh, like for roads and you know equipment and all, for the supervisor concerned. Um, I believe that uh, pretty well covers the areas. Uh, let's see, study discussion, board of education, research committee. They wouldn't let you <coughs> speak. They wouldn't let you speak. <laughs> County redistricting education. Our program on education is about the same as theirs, and we have already took possession on the sheriff's session thing. Read them at the court. Poll on the, uh, the labor department. Mm -hmm. Lord, read them the results of their yeah. poll on labor. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let, you, you guys be interested in this. <coughs> they sent out a letter. <coughs> get the feelings of their members on the following subjects. Uh, replace justice of peace court system. And that's another one we won't have to your list to consider that. Give the tax collector. Mind city county tax collecting duties. Of course that again is in line with what we've already acted on for this supervisors to redistrict counties. Establish legislative research committee, consolidate county roads on the board of pension there plan. This is about the same as our county unit system. State Board of Education, appointed or elected. <coughs> appointed state superintendent of education, statewide equalization of property assessments. That's in line with the one we've adopted. Election of supervisors in county at large and create a state department of labor. Now <coughs> They, they listed how they all voted, what percent was for what. But what Tom is getting at, that uh, we got a, we got something here that's rather interesting. Out of the people polled, 47% of them voted against creation of the Department of Labor. 31% was for it. 22% was undecided, which means that out of the business community, they didn't even get a majority in opposition to the State Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. The significant, the significant thing here is that 31 percent of the business people realize there is a need. That's good. It is good. That's it's progress, progress anyway. Right. Sure yeah. that. Progress. Right. Now there might be some other items that you folks know about that we haven't acted on, uh, on the as far as the legislature is concerned. <coughs> they don't hesitate to bring them up. I'm sure there'll be others come up. But uh, I need to know, you see, whether we got an official position on these items I mentioned. <coughs> what about the governor's succession uh, constitutional amendment? Should we take a position on that or not? If so, what is your position? Yeah. Well, uh, against. I'm against. I'm, I'm against, against that. Against, huh? I'd be opposed. Unless, unless somebody has some information or points to the contrary that I hadn't heard about, thought about. Once again, at the present time, I think we'd be compelled to be against the bill. <laughs> Might wind up with him again, huh? <coughs> you're you're uh, enough. Uh, the only sure way we got machine politics <laughs> developing four years, yeah. and you've just about made it down. Mm -hmm. You come along with one of these characters that could go it's eight years. Yeah. 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 But if he could go eight years, if he, if he could succeed himself, unless you had it to a two term limit, he'd be in there forever. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Is this clause just to, uh, for a limit, or is it just succeed well, himself? Probably, probably be for two terms. Some of the Louisiana does the Resolution Act to say it's free for two terms, or is it sort of open ended? Uh, really, I haven't seen the resolution. All I know is that I've been advised by some individuals that they were going to introduce it this constitutional Well, as a matter of fact, it was introduced last time. Mm -hmm. but it never <coughs> <coughs> well, whose bill is it? 
who, who's sponsoring, who's sponsoring the bill? Some of John Bell Williams' uh, people is what it'll be. Some of the <coughs> administration uh, bill, in other words. Yeah. 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 Strickland introduced it uh, for, uh, in, the, in the last, right, in the first regular session of this administration. It comes up at a time. We never have took a position on it. I just wanted to know what, if any, opposition was. Well, let's oh. wait till we get our man in and then we'll talk All right. about it. You sure. offer a motion that we oppose it? <laughs> Yeah, I'd offer I'll second that. Okay. I, yeah. Any further discussion? Not all in favor of a motion signify it by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Now, how about the Lay Board of Education? Uh, there has been a rather lot of support developed for a reconstituted Lay Board of Education as recommended by the Booz Allen report. Uh, I have had a discussion with Garvin Johnson on this subject. They were with us when we opposed it back during the Barnett administration for about the same reasons as we were. But there is a, a, a lot of feeling now throughout the state with various groups and individuals that, uh, that we are over the crisis, so to speak and that, uh, that we would all benefit, really, with a Lay Board of Education, as recommended by the Booth Island Report. And it might be that we might want to reconsider now and support the plan. Now, MEC, see if I can find it here. Surprising to go through this stuff from MEC and see how close we are together on a lot of these subjects. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we can support most of their program that's in coming up with it. It says at least four Blue Ribbon study groups are concerning themselves with the makeup of Mississippi State Board of Education in recent years. All reached the same conclusion. Mississippi needs an extended lay board of education. Booz, Allen, and Hamilton management consultants in the statewide education study directed by the Mississippi Research and Development Center in 1966-67 declared the rapid growth of elementary and secondary education in terms of students enrolled and monies expended and the emergence of new and often complicated educational problems require the attention of an enlarged state board of education made up of qualified and dedicated Mississippians. It is recommended, therefore, the top priority be given to amending the Mississippi State Constitution to authorize the establishment of a nine-man state board of education. Only lay citizens should be eligible for board membership. That's the end of the quote from the Booz Allen Report. A legislative study committee which reported to the Mississippi Legislature in 1962 said, there should be a state agency for education comprised of a lay board and professional staff responsible for legislation to the people. In other words, uh, well, would that be abolishing the uh, election of the? Uh, 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 well, yes, and in effect, uh, they deal with this uh, separate and apart, though. Uh, but we ought to deal with it together. We, in other words, if you uh, if you go to the expanded board, the next question is going to be should you abolish the elected position of state superintendent of education, or allow him to be appointed by the expanded board? We're going to have to deal with that question, too, as part of it. Well, do you think we'd be smart in letting this fly and let the uh, Teachers uh, Association uh, carry the ball on this and let us uh, confer with them at a later point and, uh, and then come back with a... Yeah, you know, it might be, I don't know, but uh, the, thing, the thing is, you see, that we uh, we opposed it. If you remember, we fought it, defeated it as constitutional amendment before. And the re main reason for it, we didn't want Ross Barnett appointed in the state board of education, or the White Citizen Council, and, and so forth, to take an over control of education. And Jack Tubb and Garvin Johnson, the people like that in the system itself, also opposed it for about the same reason. Now, Johnson has already come out in favor of the expanded board and in favor of appointment of, a, of the state superintendent of education. Do you think that, uh, I suppose that we could interpret that as meaning that the uh, that the teacher association would, yeah. would be of a like yeah. position? Right. Well, if that being the case, I think we could take position now. Mm -hmm.
Well, uh, the mechanics of this, uh, the nine would be appointed. Is that is that the mechanics of it? The well, nine, nine would be appointed. There's several different proposals, and you might want to consider uh, uh, that impression on how you want it set up uh, under the college board. I believe. I believe you have um, what is it on that board? About eight, and they are appointed for about two-year terms and staggered terms. Well, no governor can get control of the of the board in one particular time. See, this is I behind it. The state board of education would likewise it should be set up, whereby no no governor would be able to appoint a majority of that board during his term in office. What is the provisions called in this, as far as you know now, for the appointment uh, of the first the uh, first nine? What, what do, how do they propose to do that? I mean, what, what, what would they do? Would the governor, uh, in any given term, say John Bell Williams, would he appoint the, uh, the first nine, uh, three for a, a year, given three for a year, three, three for two for years, another, yeah. and three for yeah. another? Well, originally, that? this is the way it happened. Let's see, let's see, let's see what to say here. Members, let's see. Let's just read what the Economic Council says. The Economic Council of Concern with the Development of State Human Resources recommends that the Mississippi the Mississippi Structures Board of Education be provided for a predominantly labor board established by appointment, the size which should be small enough and the terms of office long enough to ensure effective administration. Members should be membership uh, member terms should be staggered to prevent selection of the majority of the board during any four-year period. In the 48 states having boards of education, members of 30 of the boards are appointed by the governor. Nine boards are elected by the people, and the remaining nine selected by other means. But it, it seems like that the uh, favorite way of doing it is by appointment of the governor on a staggered basis. Uh, as, as I pointed out, there's several different ways of doing it. Uh, as, as Booz Allen points out, part of them can be appointed by the governor, part of them can be elected. Uh, personally, I don't see much point in having two different ways of doing no. it. No. You see? Go one way. It should be one way. Of course, there's no way around the fact that the governor, uh, to, at the institution of the thing, the right. beginning of the thing, right. would have. No way around that. Yeah. He makes at least for it. one year you'd have yeah. whoever the thing about it is that you have a board of staff. Well, yeah. more than that, because he's going to serve for four years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then if he succeed himself, it wouldn't be long for you to have a board. how far in the term he'd, uh, you were when he This thing appointed. would be dangerous if uh, the governor's uh, amendment to succeed himself worked. Yeah. Then you'd have a governor in office eight years, and during that time he'd surely get control of the thing. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, they came within one vote of getting control of the college board, so I'm told. I don't know that. You know who's, uh, who's one of the main problems on that board? In them Robin. I don't doubt it. Mm -hmm. He's probably the main problem. Yeah. When he goes on to wherever he's going, when he departs this line, I think there will be a lot of people better off. <laughs> There'll be a lot of people there, though, that won't be so well. No, <laughs> they'll be in bad shape to be in his company. But <laughs> right. Well, what do you folks think about this thing? You want to add it out some more, lay it on the table, or act on it? Well, uh, what is, uh, uh, like Brother Taylor's uh, uh, suggestion, while I go back to teachers, uh, what is the Teachers Association? What is their recommendation on this as far as uh, uh, the mechanics of the thing on a staggered basis? I, I, I haven't seen any literature where they've actually took a position as to how it should be done. Uh, the only thing that, that I've seen is statements and speeches that Robin Johnson's made, which seems seem to be the position of the end. I'll tell you the only thing that bothers me about the whole thing. I'm probably as concerned about education as anybody in this state because I've got five children in the public schools in Mississippi at this time. Uh, I would be somewhat reluctant to 
put the educational system in the state uh, completely uh, beyond the total recall of the, of the uh, citizens. And I think any time you get an appointment board, then what sort of education would you really have? Now, in states where they got a reasonable amount of judgments and sense, apparently they have a good one. Well, what, you, what would you have in Mississippi with an appointed board and a governor sitting up there? Even if he didn't appoint him, he can get to somebody that did appoint him, or will appoint the next one. And I, I, I'd worry about it from this you angle. Where you give up the idea of electing them. Is it what you mean, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. But you know, as it stands now, you've got a three member board with uh, the state superintendent of education, right. the attorney general, and, and the uh, secretary of state making up the board. Right. And of course, this is, uh, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, truth that uh, you know that there ought to be a board. It might be <coughs> might, might, might ought to think about that. that uh, sure, the board needs to be expanded for lay people only, but they ought to be elected instead of appointed. You know? This would remove any objections I had. I just would hate to see. I, I sit in on a few of these appointed committees and boards yeah. in this state, and uh, one or two guys runs the thing. Yeah. Well, and, uh, uh, I've been thinking of giving some thought to the thing uh, in the past. And uh, my idea on uh, one of my ideas on the thing is the state is uh, divided into three uh, districts uh, for uh, highway commissioner and uh, and that uh, and if you're going to have a nine man board uh, I, I would uh, my suggestion is on the thing is that they be three elected at large from each of the uh, three yes, uh, districts Uh, this uh, would be a big solution. Well, I mean, there's one other thing that would concern me that I think we ought to be real sure that the bill contained a provision where the C's nine men would elect their own chairman. Yeah, that's uh, well, I, I, I just the governor's going to wind up appointing the chairman every time. Yeah, no, you uh, like where you're going. So he's got yeah. it no matter who appoints. It. All right. Uh, now, I, uh, my my uh, my idea on that was just exactly yours that uh, when these nine are elected and when they sit down in their first in their first meeting, that that be the first order of business that they elect. They elect their chairman own chairman. And elect their own chairman. You got a motion on that? I'd put that in the form of a motion. The motion is that we uh, favor a, <coughs> an expanded board of education made up of nine members, three to be elected from each district. Uh, the highway district. Or I'll the second that motion. Any further discussion on that? <coughs> Not all the the motion signifies the same aye. Aye. All opposed. Now, what about the state superintendent of education? Uh, you want to maintain it as an elected position, or you think this new board should appoint him? Well, uh, my thinking on that again would be that this would this nine-man board, with uh, with them electing their chairman would automatically abolish the state uh, state superintendent of education as an elective office as an elective office yes as such and that they should be authorized then to appoint or hire a state superintendent of education to run the school yes I would say that you'd have smoother administration of the school system if these nine people decided. If you elected one person yeah. separate from them, then that's you could right. always yeah. have them that sort of cross yeah. purposes right. and uh, sort of defeat well, each other, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that was right. Are you all for a motion? No, sir, no. That would be that the newly created Board of Education be, uh, in other words, abolish the elected uh, superintendent of education and authorize the the elected new board of education to, to, to appoint a state superintendent. That's right, correct. We did you said that, didn't you? Yes, sir. Any any more discussion on that? Not all in favor of the motion signifies the saying aye. 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 Opposed? This way you got part of both of them there. And I right. think this is good. Well actually you still don't lose complete right. control That's because right. If the school system starts downhill, then at least enough citizens right. can go to these board members that you can get something done. Right. <laughs> but if you ain't got no say so in who they are and right. who's going to replace them, then they'll ignore you. Right. <laughs> right. What about the <coughs> the research commission? 
Well, that, that committee we kept hearing something about that would uh, <coughs> uh, be available for as a service to the uh, members of the legislature in which they would do research on these various bills and have the information available and all that sort of thing. That's it. And then the legislation is going to be introduced. The MEC is going to have it introduced. And that's the reason I'm bringing it up here to see what, uh, what if anything, we in position we want. I can see a lot of good from that. If it's properly set up. On the other hand, I can see some dangers that that would be the legislature. Well, a lot of members of the legislature feel that way about it. There's always been a lot of, this is not anything new. There's always been yeah. a lot of opposition to yeah. it because uh, some members of the legislature feel that this thing would be a super legislature and that they would be taking over and all this kind of stuff, then I can see it if it's not properly set up where, where for instance, if we, if we were in a way and didn't have any representation on it, then they could give us a bad time. So um, a lot of it depends, frankly, on how it's set up, what authority they have, you see, and whether or not the legislature itself exercises control over it. I would be in favor of it if the proper safeguards are put there. There's uh, no question, you see, but, well, now they point out here that, uh, and as, as I pointed out to you, that last, during the last session of the legislature, there was over, over 2,000 bills introduced. And when it's was humanly it done impossible. On that water bill? I've been recommending to up your bill another five dollars, so that's what the power is really want. Really, it's really it's really impossible for every member of that legislature to read every bill that's introduced and find the snakes in it, just like one she was talking about with this one that sneaked through over there. Uh, this uh, wouldn't be no better off if they, if they if this commission recommended. Well, I'll tell you, there's, there's, not there's a couple of things that bothers me, Paul, and I guess I'm the great descendant, but uh, if you had a research commission in this state that was controlled other than by the legislature, I think mm -hmm. it could be the most dangerous thing we ever uh, was in favor of. Right. Because if you had a governor that controlled it, then certainly all of the reports that they'd turn into the legislature would be in favor of the programs he wanted adopted. Mm -hmm. That's right where it was facts or not. Then yes, yeah. who's going to check behind him and see where they're feeding the actual facts to the legislature or feeding the facts somebody wants them to be fed? Well, that's the part of it concerns me. <laughs> that's where the danger is. Now, I'd be in favor of it on this basis. All of these bills eventually get shuttled to some committee for consideration. Mm -hmm. I think certain committees in the House of uh, Representatives or the Senate ought to have the power to hire consultants to research a particular bill and give a report, but then that committee would have full control over the people making the report. Well, they, they, they more or less do that, now. But I mean enough that they'd get yeah. adequate research. Yeah. In other words, if the legislature would set itself up in such a way that all of the bills at a certain point was assigned a committee and they called in certain consultants to research certain bills and report back by a certain time. Then I think this could be given to all the members and you'd have some control over it. Otherwise, I think it'd be dangerous. In other words, you were saying give the legislature certain powers to uh, to do research necessary on well, they can appropriate your funds on a to committee the basis committees well, to hire committee. their own consultants. Well, they do that already. They, uh, they've got a... a uh, they call it now a uh, recess study committee or something of them made up of the legislature and they will study and make recommendations on certain issues already and of course uh, they will hire staff to work it up uh, which means that it don't require any new legislation to do uh, for uh, what you're yeah. talking about but I've got my reservations frankly about this uh, this thing we can hear and it might be well the thing for us to do is just oppose the creation of it but since it's going to be introduced, I need to know what, if any, position you want us to take on it over here. I'd be opposed to it unless we had some real safeguards. I think the research would be very valuable if it was in the right manner. Well, at the present, a lot of these legislators uh, 
Well, it's just like Claude said, it's uh, humanly impossible for every legislator to to read and uh, and make up his own mind about every bill that's uh, introduced. Uh, there was a bill introduced last year uh, changing one of the holidays in the state of Mississippi uh, that uh, that we have in our contract uh, uh, definite uh, uh, stating that uh, uh, that particular day is a holiday. Well, when we come around to that day, the telephone company says, no, that ain't a holiday. It's been changed by the legislature. Well, hell, we didn't know who got it. And so I get on the telephone and I call, I try to call my legislators and uh, uh, senators. Well, we don't know about it. We don't know about it. And uh, and telephone company had the, uh, uh, they had the number to number bill, bill and everything that. Uh, Probably the, introduced it to the five to be with most likely. That, that the holiday had been changed. Well, well, I can tell you about the water bill thing. There's a lot of legislators, no matter how many bills, if they read it, they wouldn't understand them. And uh, a lot of them <coughs> miss so many meetings that they don't know what bill is introduced. You're coming back now to this thing is uh, a sensible person can't afford that job over there. <laughs> well, well, what you want? Uh, 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 he wouldn't. He wouldn't oppose the creation of it. Well, I'm just like you. Know, I don't think we need it uh, unless, you know, of course, we might. We uh, might uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to oppose it. I don't right. believe that. Second my motion. Second. And we'll pour discussion. So I don't want to the motion signify it to say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carried and so on. You know, uh, one final word on the thing. Yeah. Maybe the best approach to the whole thing would be uh, <coughs> Houses of the yeah. state government would be appropriate enough funds to develop a year-round professional staff that always stayed at the capitol and done this sort of thing right. under the control of the <coughs> legislature. They can still do the same research. This is about as far as I think they're going to go anyhow. You know, uh, that, that I think would be very, very bad.
You want to offer a motion to support that, Mr. Martin? Yeah. I second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor of the motion, signify it and say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. To oppose or to? No, no, to uh, support, support the creation of a county aye. union system. Yeah, make sure we get it support. Do you think we ought to take a position on this uh, at large proposition or let the courts go ahead and do like they well i think it would do. be good for us to go on record uh that the that the that the, that the uh supervisor's districts be uh, properly apportioned according to population and it takes care of it and that would be either either uh redistricting or at large right, right as they right. set it up right i think it ought to be done you all bet uh, there's a motion that's oh, all well. It's in line with the one that one vote. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I'll second it. It's already been done at large. Yeah. All right. Uh, they run it large this last yeah. time. Any discussion on that? All in favor of one motion to be to signify to say aye. 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 Opposed? The state auditor is fixed to make a report on the car down there. Is that right? We'll run the jail. We may have a little bit of a number. They have misused the money. Running at large and dump one or two, and it saves one or two. Now, I believe that takes care of the legislative items. That, uh, you mentioned the replacing the JP court, system, but you right. didn't take right, that. Right, right, court. That's it. That is down there. Yeah, I missed that. Well, I'm not in favor of any fee system. That should have been abolished years ago. Uh, they remedied it on that score. There is a study group, a study has been made, and Bob Starnes and Bill Stanley, and then on they were invited to participate. Um, and this, this panel made certain recommendations as far as changing the court system itself. Uh, and I'm not as familiar with the uh, complete recommendations as I should be to present this thing to you on an intelligent basis. But it appears to me if we're going to take a position uh, concerning the abolishment of the JP system, that we should also take a position about the need to revise the whole court system in line with this study group's uh, proposal. See? But it might be best to lay this one on the table. I think it'd be better just to stay out of here. Until, until we've got more information to make an intelligent decision. Well, that, that's a good idea. Uh, no. One one thing is going to push him into bodice in the JP system. Now they'll do the right thing for the wrong reason. <laughs> the fact that there's been several Negroes elected as JPs this time is going gonna, is gonna to probably push this one out front quicker than anything else. Well, then another thing. You don't have to get involved in it if you don't. People want to squawk involved. about JP's system. You got a county attorney, you got a, a county judge, they're paid by the month, and they're in session a week a month. Mm -hmm. And they can abol abolish the JP system. If he has to stay there all month to try the cases, he's getting paid for the month. And when he ain't in there, he's taking part of the practice. Well, the only problem with that, Brother Brown, is there's some counties that don't have a county attorney, and there's some of them where the judge count carries <coughs> covers three or four counties in the place. Well, that's one. true, too. So you'd have uh, problems. Back in the county I live in, Lamar, if it wasn't for the JPs, there's not a judge within the county. Of no description. You don't have the county, of the county district. Had, wouldn't you be about it? You might or you might not. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to go further to do the oh, same yeah. thing. I mean, you know, on these little you don't, have, you don't have a single county judge in that area no. that you were in. No, sir. JP court and the circuit. That's it. Well, and the Thompson. circuit courts are more the county court. <laughs> uh, Jack Thompson, it is. Your Jack. Right. Your Jack. Right. Jack JP. He he, he, he told me the other day, for God's sakes, don't y'all go up there and abolish the JP. I just got but elected. Huh? He said, I just got elected. I got too much invested in this thing. I got to serve a few years, yeah. <laughs>
Go ahead, Jack. Now, oh, you yeah. take Caliber of the people that hold you the take, office. You take care of a lot of them down there. The, the whole city was in if these ones. Been the way the law reads, the constable had a better job than the sheriff. <laughs> now, you've got five JPs and five constables in beat one. And it's been redistricted. It's been redistricted. Now, none of them is going to get fat, but they're going to arrest everybody they can arrest. Whether he's drunk or not, Lord, I don't see how. You mean even after they re uh, portion the, the, the beats, that beat one's got five posts? And what he means by that, what used to be beat one. Yeah, what or used to be beat one, now it's, it's all changed. Because the city's all already all enough by five ways, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, parts of the city is in all of the distance, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, do you fellas want to, uh, you want to do I think we ought to stay clear of that one right? for, for a while. Will we get more information? Okay. I think the only position we should take now is that, uh, if the jobs are maintained, yeah. they ought to the set a higher system. qualification the for qualification the people to eliminate the salary. Right. Put them on salary. This is correct. Yeah. This, 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 this makes yeah. sense. This That's makes right. sense. That's right. You want to offer that as a motion? I would. Would that be our position? You heard the second it. Which, uh, in effect, uh, means you, you raise the qualifications and set it off on a salary basis and eliminate the fees from it. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. <coughs> now, do any of you have any matters uh, that we haven't covered yet that you know that's going to probably be introduced that we might ought to consider? Uh, <coughs> not necessarily a new idea. I was just looking over this remembering a little of my idle conversation. Yeah. Uh, and this came from a fairly reliable source. It's supposed to be fairly close to the insurance companies. There's a possibility that we can get a $50 a week benefit on uh, unemployment comp, I mean, uh, yeah, well, <coughs> workman's compensation. <laughs> workman's comp? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's a good possibility that we're going to make some, some real progress in two, two areas. Mm -hmm. uh, unemployment insurance and workman's comp. And uh, in line with what, you know, we've already got a position on this, we, mm -hmm. I'm working right now with uh, Dixon Powell and Jack Travis and have consulted with two of members of the legislature. We're going to try to put the workman's comp back, back about where it was about 60 before all these changes mm -hmm. and increase the benefits mm -hmm. up to around $18,000. Well, I, I talked to uh, our... This is in the making now. Right. Now, the thing... It's a funny thing. We had to more got this thing off the press before I discovered it was out of date. Yes. And that's on unemployment insurance. It's a shame that we hadn't got the information before we went to press with this. It was not out here at the hearing where we found out that the average wage had been increased since this thing was adopted in 61 mm -hmm. to the point that some of our higher paid workers now with the maximum eliminated from the law where the formula would take over would probably be drawing about $45. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm operating under the assumption that you want to eliminate that maximum. We're not tied to $40. That's right. Uh, yeah. if, if, if you just want the $40, this is no problem. But if you want to really do the job as far as the act's concerned, the thing to do is eliminate that well, not to exceed. provided how nobody can draw the $30. Right. Let's get that in the record over here so that we'll be sure that uh, that, that is our position. Uh, I, I've been operating on this assumption all the time. This is uh, true to some degree on your unemployment insurance, too. Well, this is unemployment That's what he's talking about now. We're talking about unemployment, huh? We asked. See, we, we got $40 on this little yeah. sure, show, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And we the asked our bank. insurance maximum should be raised from 30 to $40 a week. See? And we should say just uh, eliminate the limit. Maximum. We asked the six, six and two thirds, really, yeah. out there before the advisory committee. The advisory committee raised to six and six and two thirds of the man weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping that we'd get that thirty dollar truck at least and fall back on the fifty five percent, based on the average. Now that it gives you about uh, uh, with it, about uh, right about fifty dollars a month. Did they fall out of Nobody didn't argue about it right then. They didn't figure they had to, I guess. 
It also talks about that word misconduct. Boy, that is one I wish was out of there. Mm -hmm. He said really define good. what it means. Well, that's, that's right. right. James, what we're going to probably do on this one is that Walter Bevins has already agreed to call a meeting of the administrators and minister act. We're going to have a session with them. And interpret what it and means. Interpret and, and get them straightened out where they properly administer the thing. Right. Well, that would help. Yeah. Because now, if you just say good morning in the place of good evening, that can be misconduct, according to him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Why the wrong dress? Well, you know, well, I don't know. He'd be in trouble all the time. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, what about this? What about this limitation? Uh, limitation that we're putting in here. Uh, do you think we ought to take this position of 39 weeks? Uh, or, or actually, uh, uh, well, it's 26 now. It's 26 now, but should we, uh, Extend the, the uh, weeks. uh what, what I'm talking about, in other words, should we put a ceiling on, on the weeks, on the, on the number of weeks? Well, I, I think so. I so. agree on the number of weeks. Uh, well, we are, I'm going to continue operating in other If you put an open me in number of weeks and now you never get a benefit up because we know how much well, it costs. I think there's two things that I think we're going to follow this thing well this time that the commission is going to probably recommend, and that's one is to eliminate the seven day waiting period. That would help. That's, uh, that's I think, is going to be one. And two is uh, increase the benefits. There seems to be a lot of support out there for that. Good. And, uh, uh, let's see, what was the other? Increase the minimum amount. Yeah. 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 Very, minimum. Very few people join the minimum anyhow. No. Well, the fact is, 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 the I, uh, talked to Paul Smith briefly. Yeah, he went out there, he, he yeah. testified. Done a good job, but the veterans uh, mm -hmm. were in favor of that. Yeah. Yeah, I got a copy of his resolution, too, by the way. I, uh, the I did take them two questions man, up with our legislators, and they all agreed that that is right, and they're in favor of all these things. Well, so I asked them specifically. And we are going to meet with our legislators <coughs> tonight. <coughs> We're setting I'm going to try to be there myself. So. We're setting the meeting up a yeah, week ahead of time because a regular meeting, I'd be wet the day after Christmas, and you know that wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't get nobody there, would Oh, yeah, that's right. That Mr. Part. Chairman, in connection yeah. with this general subject of compensation, yeah. this would be not a legislative act, but an executive act. What would be the chances with the new people in office? And with somebody's term expiring, that we could get labor man back on the commission. When they work in Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, I, I assume that. Oh, they have somebody on both commissions. I assume, yeah. I assume that this is one of the things that we, that, labor on that, that we should be doing anyhow we'll when, the, when the term expires. That we go to work to get. Well, I thought we might need to think about it and uh, kind of get our. You well, Jack Travis hitched up. Jack right. Travis here <coughs> tells me, you know, you know, y'all love most of you know who Jack is. <coughs> tells me that the governor and elect asked him in a conversation uh, just prior to his leaving for Washington after the general election was over, uh, who uh, would be a good man for the work with Conversation Commission. Jack tells me and John Bell asked. Well, uh, if I was going to guess, I would probably I'd probably guess that the lawyers would like to require that a lawyer uh, be on there with the same qualifications that a judge or somebody else would have, as separate and apart from a labor man as such. How many have we got? One or two of those terms expiring during this next four? About years. time, Bob. Every I think mean, Bob every the only two. one. Two of them, I believe. It's over, it's over six years. That point is six years, aren't they? Let's see. Russell Fox was the last one, no? 
No. All this Ed guy Kemp. Did die, yeah. Ed yeah. Kemp was the last one to die, was the next one. Yeah, but uh, every, every state, you don't know about every state, that, yeah. that's the position Florida had will be coming yeah. up in America. Yeah. That's, it'll be coming up right away. I think it'll be. I think uh, that'd yeah. be John Bell's baby. Mm -hmm. Well, I assume that, that we all uh, uh, are responsible to do our best to see that we get a labor representative on there, right? Yeah. Right. A better man than we got now. Well, let me ask you this. In the event we do get a State Department of Labor, don't we, aren't we going to try to get the man in there to represent labor? Well, certainly. Uh, if they did, it would be out of luck. Well, here's the thing about it. If a, a Department of Labor is not properly set up, we'd be better off without that one, one on sure. like we are now. And there's a lot of danger here that this could happen to us during this administration. And when we went opposition on the Department of Labor, of course, it, I believe is that it's properly set up, you see. And if we won't go along with anything that's rigged, it's run by the Manufacturing Association. I assume that this is what we mean by the Department. I remember that's not correct. That's right. I remember way back when William Green was living, and we did put a Department of uh, uh, State Department of Labor bill in the hopper, and by golly, when it came out, we had to vote against it. Yeah. You had to vote against it. Yeah. But it was, it was yeah. butchered up right. that we wouldn't right. even accept it. Yeah. Uh, Claude, uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, on this brochure, we have our program. Uh, have uh, has has anybody has there been any uh, mechanics set up for uh, instituting this in? I mean, getting it in the hopper. Uh, legislation yeah, drafted. Yeah, getting legislation well, we are, drafted. We have got some people working on on at least three pieces that we've been talking about. Uh, and some other people, uh, some members of the legislature, are drafting bills in line with some of the proposals. The three specific ones that we're working on is the Department of Labor, uh, Workers' Compensation, and Unemployment Insurance that we're doing some work on ourselves. I've got, uh, I've been in touch with uh, a fellow over in Atlanta with the State Depart with the uh, U.S. Department of Labor, who, who has had considerable experience in this area. Of State Departments of Labor. Uh, we've got copies of bills that have been introduced in the legislature. I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to try to set up a meeting with uh, with uh, several members of the legislature who are dependable, who wants to help co-sponsor the bill on the Department of Labor. I want to sit down with them and let them be in on the drafting stages of the bill itself. That's where we are with that. So well, what I had, what I had, what I had reference to, I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I met for about an hour and a half with Perrin Purvis. Yeah. And uh, it might be well for you to yeah. uh, get together with him. Uh, there's uh, certain phases of this thing that he, that he would like to have a party in. And, and, I'm uh, sure he'll support the compulsory. Well, well, that, well, that's uh, that's his uh, that, well, that's, that's his that's bill. That's the type of thing that I'm talking about. Yeah. That people like Purvis, you yeah. see, are already drafting bills that implement a number of these yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Graham's interested in that work with Scott Bill. Well, yeah, he told me in Harrisburg the other night. They called me off to the side, and uh, he's had some personal experience right, with right. it. So he he, is. He's a strong advocate now of uh, working for uh, Comp of improving that. Well, I believe he'd help draft so, a bill on that one. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, been trying about three years to collect something. Yeah, yeah. I got hurt. They ain't it, able it's to time. It's <laughs> time that somebody's taken over and helping out because hey, we've got the worst one they are. These referrals open, you can get mm -hmm. and give us this one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ten percent disability. Try to place him in another job. Nah, he ain't able. Permanent disability from the state. We got two or three heart cases. But well, now it's getting rough. You take the old, the, the, the New England states, the entire New England states had a state law under the old English law assumption of risk. And no matter what happened, you assumed that risk and you got nothing. 
I got several other items here I want to present to you other than the legislative items. So if you, and if you don't have something to bring up in connection with the legislature or the program, I'd like to uh, call those things up. And if you have anything in addition to what we discussed on the legislative program. No, I don't have anything on the legislative issues, but I would like to just make a couple of comments on what right. you think will be the outcome of the race for the Speaker of the House. It's a toss-up right yeah, now. Yeah, I'd like to hear that, too. <laughs> the toss-up right now, uh, uh, it's kind of a eeny, meeny, money mo proposition of uh, not having much to choose from with the two guys that's really in the race. Uh, you will be interested in knowing that the, the CASA has approached, uh, approached me, which means he, he wants your support as well, and has made some definite commitments on committees Matter of fact, he'll let us name the chairman of the labor committee if we if he swing about speaker. three votes behind him. He needs about three votes now to be elected, so he tells me. Uh, the other people haven't consulted and conferred with us at all. Uh, I've talked with several members of the legislature. Most of them have made up their mind already. I don't know, and maybe you can advise me on this, I don't know whether I should get involved in this thing too much or not. What do y'all think? No, it'd be better if you didn't. If I didn't. Well, I what think that's... What do we stand If you're on a losing side, then you could be faced with sort of harassment from the speaker all the way from Yeah, this is the danger. <laughs> you know, see? But the thing that kind of bothers me is looking at who's supporting who. Yeah. All of the SOBs over there, most of them were in the junction camp and will wind up with a key committee chairmanship, in my opinion. Unless Cosser gets a speakership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I yeah, that's what I mean. Unless, you see, if Cosser wins, uh, Jimmy Marr is the guy that's been talking to me. He's over in Rankin County. He's a pretty good guy. He usually votes with us. Uh, we usually depend on him. Uh, he tells me that we'll get a better shake out of Cosser than we would the other crew. Yeah. The interesting thing is that Cosser, for the first time, is ready and willing and wants our help. Yeah, well, I got so something new. This is uh, good, too, you see, that we're in a better position, really, to put the squeeze on Cosser than we are Junkie. Well, Y'all know that Cosser's firing like a man. That again is something that concerns me is who owns him and controls him, you see. Let's sit by and like him. All right, then look at Johnson who owns him and controls him. I don't know who owns who. Yeah. <laughs> but I do know that Tasha is Miss Hip Brian Light Company man. Well, last time I talked to say this Jolly, he was in favor of Junkin, so I have who? to go. Junkin. Yeah, Jolly is? Well Kasha tell has been telling me that Ed Ed Jolly's in his camp. John has been calling us, trying to get a hold of some other people for for Cosby. He's probably paying both sides of the fence. Well, I've minute. got to talk to him again Tuesday night because he said Johnson wasn't a particular friend of his, but he said he was better than Cosby. No, there you go. <laughs> he called the office, wasn't he? Hunting W.A. Stevens one day, wanting W.A.'s phone number for Cosby. Well, he was he Ed John, Ed Yes, sir. Well, he's changed, he's hold changed up. then, because, but well, that's the way I'm going to find out. Well, you fellas agree that there's not much point in me. I don't I think you'll be involved in this thing. Neither one of them don't think smell like it. I more harm than it did. That's right, because it, just like James said, if you happen to lose, uh, wind up on the, on the wrong side, well, then yeah. you're out of luck from then on. So we'll continue as we are. I'm glad you brought this up, though. I wanted to report this to you about that. I just wondered how yeah, it would right, right. Anyhow, though, I get, uh, I, I think we're going to make some, I think we're going to make some progress this time. I'm, I've been checking the specs with the Senate. Uh, we made some definite improvements in that thing. Uh, most of our friends are back. Let's uh, <coughs> be grateful that Stone Barfield pulled out of the race. I just want to see the you have to draw his name up. I'll do it pretty good. You mentioned him. Uh, did y'all mention the tax huh? situation while I was out? You did. Nice. Yeah. No. no, we didn't get into that. Uh, it's it's going to be one of the biggest issues. Well, that's right. This is going to be it, you know, the money thing. And uh, I've been talking to the legislators about this all the time, and I'm using the MEC chart to show where the money is coming from. Uh, what's the matter, Miss Phillips? 
She likes that cigar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, yeah. you guys, you and Blair Eyes want to see where the money comes from. It runs the state government, right. and they hooked it. Forty-seven point eleven percent comes from sales tax. Sales tax. Forty-seven point eleven percent. The next highest source is, is income tax, thirteen point twenty-three. The back of tax, eight point twenty. Use tax, six point twenty-three. And goes on down the line. They, 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 the, one of the major sources, a source that should be examined real carefully, is the oil and gas severance tax. I don't think we're getting the money, the state's getting the money it ought to out of that source. What about the booze? What tax. is about 20 something percent? Booze, uh, ABC is uh, 4.23. 20 million dollars come from the booze. But you're right. You're right. The, this is going to be the number one problem. And, uh, of course, we have already got in our legislative proposal here, our position on taxes, and uh, I think I'm obligated to fight to put the taxes on the backs of those best able to pay, right? Yeah, more on the back and have on beer and wine. Yeah. Is that beer and wine the same thing as alcohol? Is that all Yeah, number right? four is tax, uh, state uh, tax laws. Yeah. It says beer and wine. Is that... Liquor too? No. No, no, wait, wait. ABC, ABC would be ABC. just the hard liquor. American yeah. biscuit company. <laughs> <laughs> but tobacco is more than. Booze? Mm -hmm. Well, not both of them together combined. Yeah. Liquor wine, yeah. beer, and yeah. whiskey is probably higher. They'll come up to teachers and then want sales tax to teach. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to come up with this argument also that you got. Uh, uh, that uh, even though the sales tax ain't before and a half percent, I'm paying a nickel already. You can you paying it to the merchants anyhow? Why not just put that other half cent on and let the state get it? You yeah. gonna have this argument this time? Well, well, well as long as the municipalities has already passed that. See? Well, I right. don't need to tell them. You pay a nickel uh, when you buy a dollar's worth, but when you buy a, when you buy a a pretty good uh, bunch of groceries, we'll say, then it's, 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 it's computed at four and a half percent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, you buy the right amount. Well, you if you buy a dollar's worth of something, I believe you pay a nickel. But if you buy ten dollars, it's uh, it's based on four and a half percent. And you go into that. Or if it's nearer to the five five right. cents, why well, they'll pay they you they charge five and then places there, if you get 18 well, cents, they charge you cent anyway. Yeah. Well, if it's 30 cents, it's two cents. Yeah, yeah 30 cents is two cents. And if you go to the next counter, it's the same thing. And when you get out, you're paying yeah, eight percent. If, if, uh, if they put another half a percent on there, uh, it's going to hit you harder than what it is now. Even though you might just get you a little bit. So I think we got to oppose it. We will, unless you won't count that too. No, that's opposed to that. Right. Well, listen, I've got a couple of more items. Uh, one is that uh, most of y'all attended the, I uh, believe, yeah, well, everybody except Mr. Brown attended the uh, thing at the university the other day on, on the uh, possibility of uh, establishing an industrial relations department over there. And I think that we ought to take some official position here if we want to support it. Probably draft the resolution and submit it to the convention. On this, on this idea, I'd like to hear from some of y'all on that. Now. Those of you that attended the conference, it's just a matter of this conference, brother Brown was just a. They, they contacted me, and after kicking it around, we agreed that we'd call in a representative group from throughout the state to get their views on it. There was enough interest, and we'll try to do something about it. Just an exploratory thing. <coughs> I understand some people that didn't get invited got offended because they they weren't invited, but it was strictly an exploratory thing only, not something to come in and make a decision on. And we it, we felt that if we found sufficient interest, then we would go into it. You see. Well, I think the convention is the proper place to do it, and I think we're committed. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. university, if nothing else, right. stupid. So I'd uh, make a motion that we do. Forty bathroom restaurants are absolutely in support of. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Not all in favor of the motion signify to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried and so ordered. Uh, Claude, let me ask a question in connection with uh, uh, I I seem to get from this conference the other day that uh, Mississippi State uh, is in the in position of wanting uh, to uh, raise themselves up, you might say, to some of the other universities uh, around the South who are providing this uh, these facilities for uh, for labor, right. for instance, uh, uh, University of Alabama, Florida State, right. LSU, and some of the other uh, universities, right. and uh, the universities in Mississippi, and uh, especially Mississippi State, is finding themselves, uh, 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 you might say, out the back door on this thing, and uh, and they are making a pitch to uh, to be competitive uh, you might say with uh, with some of these with the, some of these other universities and I, I was behind this whole thing frankly that, more than that, I think. if we get in it we get in it uh, uh, get it started then we hope that we can get the legislature <coughs> appropriated to continue it on we don't you need a department of labor yeah well this uh, this we hope will help later down the road for the Department of Labor. This is one of the ideas also, you know. I think they pretty well told us uh, in their remarks the other yeah. day a little of what was taking place. Of course, uh, you have your own opinions and your thoughts sure. kind of follow this. Yeah. Uh, they made the pitch to the business community four yeah. years ago. Right. And they got bumped and bumped real yeah. hard. Well, they didn't make the pitch without some support. Sure. This support is still there yeah. from the business community. Now, some of these employers, I imagine Jack's got some, and I know we've got some, and I know sure. Edward's yeah. got some. They're getting tired going to the bargaining table mm -hmm. and getting beat year after year after year, and these other things coming in here and just running scot free mm -hmm. as far as uh, organized labor is concerned. Right. They want to be And Mississippi Power and Light Company and Southern Bell Telephone Company takes a real rap from That's this right. group every time they grant a wage increase. That's right. Yeah. I've seen some personal letters that Baxter Wilson received from some of these other non-organized employers in the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Tell me doing they a good service to them. They yeah. come back at them from a rate standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to grant such a uh, wage increase as this, and you can afford you to reduce my bills. bills. Yeah. Right. So this this is working, and I think it's working through these people. The Incidentally, you're talking about reducing the bills. Have you heard the news this morning no. on the uh, rate reduction of uh, coal calls that was in the state of Mississippi, ordered by the uh, FCC? Coal uh, uh, that uh, uh, telephone rates. Yeah, telephone rates uh, to be reduced immediately uh, to the extent of five million dollars a year in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> But uh, these people, I think, are beginning to come around and they want an educational right. program right. sponsored by the property institution. And I think this right. is working. Well, you folks will be interested in what happened in the committee. I was about to ask if yeah. anything that came out yeah, of the Yeah, we, we had a good uh, meeting and we have agreed to expand the committee uh, to try to make it as representative as possible and get all areas with somebody on it. We are going to recommend that the president central body serve on the committee. I was going to recommend about three Negro labor leaders to be on it. And uh, uh, people like me and Jackson and people that uh, have got sizable membership and state organizations and so forth, that they also be on it. This would be more or less a promotional committee is what it's going to be. Okay. They're going to work and prepare a brochure <coughs> that uh, will explain the thing, get it prepared as soon as possible. We're going to invite them to send a speaker to the convention to explain the program to the delegates, to get the support there. And then we're going to try to arrange for someone from that group to meet with the various state groups as they have their state.
big meeting. So when you get the date, these date comes from the Carpenter. When that's set, let us know. And if you get a meeting with your group, <coughs> let us know. CWL will do the same thing, the State Elect Election Association. So it'd be good to have somebody appear before that, you see. My next full right. state meeting will be sometime in January, probably around the 20th. Why don't you write Dean Bluell and advise him of that? Then you have to let him have somebody to appear before the group. And this way, it's going to be a Think a lot of selling, but there's already there's money, which is what I'm thinking about is, is the money. Now, in addition to this, it was also agreed that uh, that they'd make another effort to get the cooperation of the manufacturers. And they want to tell them that about uh, our support, and that it's going to be put in effect. That we're going to establish the thing over there. We'd like to have their support, but it's going to be done if they don't support it. Now, I think when they find out that we're going to do it that uh, most of them will come in. There's been a real change in the attitude of a lot of these people the last three or four years anyhow to work in. Because I've been in old meetings with here recently that I couldn't got in a couple of years ago. I'll tell you about one of them in just a minute. Now the motion was, I believe, did we vote on that? We voted on that, right. So I, I go ahead and go into this uh, this other proposition while, we, while we're there. I have already reported to you and you've already acted on, on our, our support of this clergy economic council <coughs> to do an education job as far as the uh, ministers are concerned. <coughs> Since we met last, I've been approached by uh, some economists in the universities here about cooperating with them and other groups in the state to establish a joint council on economic education. Uh, I've sit in on two meetings and have been on the steering committee. I'm now on the steering committee of the group. We have another meeting slated for sometime in January, I believe it is. But <coughs> this council will have representation on it from all segments of the society. Uh, the Manufacturers Association, Agriculture will have somebody there. The banks, all of the major banks have been participating. The idea behind it is that we don't have any any real bona fide courses on economics in the high schools. Most of the students are being graduated without any knowledge of the system itself. You see, talking about the free enterprise system. And everybody agrees that there's definitely a need to do this. And from our point of view, when they get in and start teaching the system, then they have to they have to bring collective bargaining and, and labor unions into the picture of how, how they operate and function well, within the system. Play within the economic you see, yeah. now, I'd like for you to take a position on this, uh, either instruct me to continue on, and that we do support this council, or instruct me to not to participate. <laughs> but I, I don't think there's any question about the need here. And you, you fellas, the way you, you really be, uh, you, you would have really been amazed to see the attitude of the people in that meeting about organized labor, that they must have a position on this thing. Yeah. Uh, who, who all is in this group, Claude? Uh, enlighten us just a little. Names, names of some of them? Well, not necessarily the names, but what segment of the community is involved? Labor is is yeah. business involved? Right. The universities. Universities right. under the under the uh, proposed constitution and bylaws of the organization, a majority of the of the executive board will have to be educators. But the other, you know, everybody else will have somebody sitting on the government board. See, but but education will dominate it. Control, yeah. uh, the idea behind it is, and it's going to cost some money. I don't know how much money it's going to cost, but there's going to have to be some money raised uh, to establish it, to open up an office. It won't be a big operation, but they'll have to have at least one full-time person uh, that will be preparing uh, these brochures and literature to be mailed out to the schools, and then when the schools want something, then they'll sit down with them and help develop that program for them. Now, is this at the high school level, college level? Or it's what? all both. 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 College, uh, high school and college. They're going to tack it all the way up down the line, see. 
You had uh, in the in the original meeting you had the first national bank and the deposit guarantee had well Nat Rogers sat in on the the first meeting himself. He sent a representative the last time, but the uh, full time people of my <coughs> association sit down. Uh, all of the groups had somebody there, everybody. I think ever everything in the state of any significance had representation there. This includes the Negro colleges and all. See? Well, I'm wondering this, Cloud, uh, uh, in connection with uh, these various, uh, all these various organizations, uh, I'm sure are good and, uh, and uh, we need to be there. Uh, but uh, how thin can you spread yourself to, uh, uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, take care of all of this by yourself? I mean, uh, it's uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a good question. I've just about reached my limit on spreading thin on well, the letters and all. Right, but this won't take an awful lot of my time after the planning and all of that's out of the way and the office is opened up. You see, this is they'll have a probably an annual meeting uh, and uh, something like this. It won't be like Star is where I've got to run over and make a meeting about every other day. Uh, I think this is actually one of the fundamentals that we bargained for. Right. We have an opportunity. Well, if you uh, any time have a voice, I think it behooves right. us to. That's right. Uh, uh, well. Not only that, unless something changes the image mm -hmm. in the minds of all these young people where labor and collective bargaining <coughs> and the overall system is concerned, we're headed downhill, not up. That's right. That's really well, this, this thing here. Is that's the truth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I had an occasion uh, about well, three weeks about that. About three weeks ago, uh, we have a member. One of our members in New Albany, Mississippi, has a son at Mississippi State, and uh, in uh, in their uh, in the, in the, the in his courses that he's taken, uh, something came up as to where they were uh, organized labor was uh, was involved. So this uh, his daddy uh, called me and uh, wanted to know if I could uh, be of any assistance to him as supplying him with any. Uh, material in which to uh, uh, for him to use in writing his uh, writing his essay or whatever it was on uh, on organized labor and uh, uh, I did I was able to provide him with just what he wanted and uh, his daddy called me just yesterday and told me that he received the highest grade in his class uh, uh, he received an A plus on his paper that he turned in and raised his general grade in the subject uh, to a B plus. That's good. Uh, and uh, uh, and if we can be of any assistance uh, in in helping people like that, why well, I think we got us. nothing to lose. You mean it'll help us? Sure, it'll help us. Well, you'd be surprised the the. Uh, the, the number of requests along this <coughs> line, we get them in the office just about every day. I'm, well, she can tell you, I'm writing letters and sending stuff out all the time. And the result of having sent this to every high school in the state, I've got a number of letters here I wanted to read you one or two of uh, already that's come back in. I did. Uh, we have done, uh, we've, we've did how many letters I <coughs> <coughs> Yeah. And we sent out a package of uh, stuff on collective bargaining what had the end of the high school and we had requests for that. But what you said is absolutely correct. We can't do enough of this. That's the right. reason I spent two days on that campus the other day. Uh, it's because of this kind of stuff. See. Well, do we have a motion that we support this uh, creation of this council? I so move. Thank you. Any further discussion? I hope to have some literature to make you pull along on what it's all about, really. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify to say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> so uh, we got a problem here that I want to talk to you fellas about. No kidding. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what he said? He said, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody yeah, sees us has got I, a problem, they I, I brought two or three of these letters over here. I'll uh, share yours if you share well, yours. <laughs> uh, the problem is whether we're going to make this thing available free or how do we go about collecting money. 
some people that don't have money and this is the problem. The stuff you that we won't spend, give away. <laughs> you, want spend, you want to spend this money on public relations. That's the question. <laughs> well, let me read you a couple of these letters. He says, uh, gentlemen, please send me a copy of Democracy in Mississippi, a citizen's guide to state and local government. Send to Professor Julia Brown at uh, Julius Brown, Henry Weathers High School, Rolling Fork. Now, they just want one copy. Uh, he's one of my dishes in Vernon. Yeah, well, there's fine. no point in bringing them all. I just wanted them to hear a couple of them, though. Now, this is from Harry Cramps with the Nonpart Training uh, Department of the, you know, Labor Department. He's in charge of the SEP program, and the uh, Delta okay. probably read something about it. He called me. He got a hold of this book. He might have showed it to him. And talked to me about it and uh, said that uh, he thought he, you know, they could use it in their program. He says, Dear Claude, this will confirm my telephone request today for about 300 copies of your new publication, Democracy in Mississippi, etc. I saw a copy of the booklet today and found it to be an excellent and impartial statement of essential features of Mississippi government. I believe it will be very helpful to the orientees in the SEP program, particularly during and after the discussion of citizenship responsibility. See? And I, I asked him, I said, well, Harry, I assume that you've got a little money you can spend. He said, no, that's the problem. I don't have any money. I'd like for you to make that contribution. Tell him to join the ranks. <laughs> uh, here's, a, here's another letter from Bentonia High School said, Dear Sir, we would like to have 55 copies of the booklet, Democracy in Mississippi, and so forth. The social studies teachers want to use them in their classes, and I'd like to have a few copies to use as reference material in the library. If we cannot get this many, please send us all that you can allow us. We got another one from Hazelhurst from the Kapaz <laughs> Public School. <coughs> we request to take a And, uh, the now question is, is now we, how many thousand did we have, friend? Ten? Ten thousand. Ten thousand? No, it's five thousand of that. That's all they got. Five thousand of that? Yeah, five. Yeah, five. We had ten thousand. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how much money are we talking about? Good question. How much money? Oh, how much money are we talking about? Yeah, how much money? They cost 20 cents a piece. A little less than 20 cents a piece. The time you had your tax on it. We put a price of 15 cents on it. Well, yeah, they really, cost us 20 cents. Yeah. I it gets down to this, you know, if we the want to distribute these things as a matter of public relations uh, or not. Mm -hmm. Can we afford it? I think we can. Yep, you had bundled up them in 65 and paid postage on them. That's, 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 that's going to run into cost. money. That's going to well, 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 what I think we're going to have to do, you see, is uh, we're going to have to probably cut out on the number we send. We can't put all the requests, I don't think. Well, why don't we do this? Yeah. Make it available to them at the office. Thank you, Bill. That'd that be good. For your postage, you need that. Somebody from all over the state is going to be in Jackson or know somebody that's in Jackson. Tell them we can't, we can't afford to mail just it out. Tell them they're available right? to them at the office. Mm -hmm. And, and whatever they're available, available, but just whatever they're available. Prohibitive. Send 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 Tell them that we can provide them up to a hundred copies free, uh, above a hundred copies that will be uh, required to charge a minimum amount to help to pay the cost of the thing. I mean, can we do this? Well, you know better than me. What do I do? What do you well, I tell you, it's not a hard <coughs> thing to deal with, but this this is a public relations gimmick, is what it is to, to try to. And the uh, I think we let me ask a question. Doesn't spend a certain amount of our money in this area. Doesn't most of these high schools don't they have a, a reproducing machine, uh, uh, photostat? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that booklet's been reproduced in one or two of the high schools I've got that. Uh, I, I don't ask. That, uh, I don't ask questions. Uh, and, uh, and, um, Mike and I are up at oh, uh, Bell's on. Bell's on. Couldn't, couldn't we, original book up there. Like, like when a fellow says he wants 300 copies, couldn't we send him a couple of copies of the four five copies and, well, get, and give him permission to reproduce them? Well, the thing is getting a good copy of every page, which we didn't have to get too good a copy of every <laughs> page. Yeah, you could. As full as these pages are, you could have a trouble getting reproduction. Mm -hmm. Could we uh, answer their request and just uh, say that they're available at the office mm -hmm. if, you, if you can pick them up I'm talking about quantity yeah. or if we're by uh, we'll deliver them within the next 30 days or, mm -hmm. and then if your schedule if y'all uh, trips around the country provide mm -hmm. drop by mm -hmm. drop them Mike could or if you see anybody going that way we'll like Mike could make a so. good contact we'll when you're dropping them off that's right no, it's a little under 20, cents, 20 cents a piece would be more than that. It'd be about a thousand. Well, it ain't that high. It, 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 it costs around Five 14 thousand times cents. 20 would be a thousand. About 14 cents. Yeah. About 14 cents. If Last I remember right when me and Jake yeah. got together to use the computer. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Jack's got a good good idea there. A personal contact in this thing would uh, would be yeah. good too. Yeah. And. Uh, I guess, for instance, Belzona or, or wherever it is. Department. He yeah. drives down the air than 300. Yeah. Well, if, no if, you had, <laughs> if you just kept some of these in the back end of your car, and and, uh, and as you were going that way, if you was in a few miles of there, why drop by and uh, drop by and leave them a few copies? What do you think of that? Well, the main thing that I'm concerned about is the considerable yeah. money in Portland. Yes, it is. Well, you know, I don't got posted at the time you get all that wrapped. And yeah. Funneled up, taped and tied, labeled. And <laughs> <laughs> I saw it coming. You know, that, that also. You don't know how to funnel that stuff up? Huh? We, we could, wouldn't be doing nothing but funneling up all of them. <laughs> if we could get them to pick these things up. Pick them up preferably. And then if you use this you stuff so we dispose of the 5,000. And then I think yeah. after that, probably then we should um, have some kind of. Right. Yeah, over yeah, 25 or 50 because... If we have another print, doesn't you? Yeah, know? right. Mm -hmm. Try to see how much good we can do with these. Make it a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, if the people hadn't requested them, our whole project would have sort of been a failure, wouldn't it? Right. Wasn't this the whole idea right. for having to print? Right. I mean... Yeah. Right. For five, uh, five thousand or no good stacked up there in the office. Well, if, right. they, if they want them bad enough, they'll drive down and get them. Yeah, but uh, does the committee go along with the, the idea that uh, that we make them available free of right. cost, provided they take them up in the office? Yeah. I think probably Tom and myself and Ms. Phillips just have to exercise some judgment about how many we think we can have. Yeah. Can you mail out and they right. can supply and request? Like that 5, and how many yeah, that's right. That's what I'm talking That'll about. That'll go pretty fast. Right. Of course, you're going to have this, I believe. You say free copies available at the Mississippi FLCIO office. Mm -hmm. Well, if somebody at Corinth, Mississippi, he'll mm -hmm. write you a letter and say, "Well, now I can't come to the office. Well, how much will you charge me to mail me these?" Uh, well, now we'll mail them to them. Mail them to yeah. them for the postage. Then. What we might ought to do is to make them available in each center by area and advise them where they can pick them up. That might be mm, that'd be good. That might be yeah. helpful. I believe you're going to have to combine the two ideas yeah, available at the office and Marvin and Columbus, you and Tupelo, and right. you and Meridian, and what we can do. And there'd be somebody on the yeah, coast. Let y'all ride and let y'all take uh, several hundred home with you. We can ship them to them uh, COD. Yeah. We get when we, we get a request. We ship you that yeah. number of copies. That would take care of that. If we get a request out of the area close around you, we can advise them that they can pick them up at your address. Well, you could even put this in, and then Tom just got the best idea on the whole project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put a note on that they are available at the office or COD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the post. Yeah. Right. Be yeah. glad to ship you. Whatever you want, you won't see only. Well, will some of these be going to the public libraries, or if uh, not, uh, I imagine so. You know, it's this letter here requested some. They want for a library, but that, library. that was a school library. library. Marvin's talking about public, public libraries. libraries. Uh, we haven't 
sent one out, but we'd be glad to do it. It might be a good idea. I believe it would. And I know to that, Cal. And we'll and see, uh, shipping that stuff COD, that'd be the cheapest material they'll ever get. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. For the price yeah. of the postage, you can't get it no cheaper than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Um, what else we got here? Tom Sparrow. Oh, boy. <laughs> say we did. You we couldn't public pay for the public. You couldn't pay for the public relations company? Huh? You wasn't able to pay no, for the I public relations I wasn't hardly able to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> let alone. Yeah. I spent part of one night down you there. Than, you all want, than, want, than, all want to sign that job to call me again? You sold too much of it. Maybe I spent part of it. Let uh, Marvin, I believe Marvin's only vice president, has yeah, uh, stood there and observed that thing. Let, let Marvin, uh, let, him, let him give you his version of it. Uh, was he was about, there during some of the time when business was really flourishing. Well, I was about to say this in that connection that I spent quite a little bit of time at that next booth there for the ABWR. Yeah. Uh, you didn't win that and, ride. And while I didn't pick up uh, too much of that literature, I, I, that thing came into the news later, you know, yeah. about the, some of yeah. that... Uh, of it, not that he had got there. Trouble we responsible making sure it got there when they had it here and provide him with that book. <laughs> well, of course, my uh, first hand impression of the thing was that it, uh, whatever the amount of work and the cost and everything that went into it, it was probably worth a whole lot more. I think so. Uh, it seemed to be the center of attraction. Well, everybody was attracted by the display and by the fact that you there was something that was something being given away for nothing, <laughs> with no strings attached. And uh, there's a lot, seemingly a lot of energy. There'd be only about one uh, suggestion, and I think everybody would probably go, go along with it, that some of the more attractive items uh, was not shown to the best advantage due to the fact of, of what it was in the mm -hmm. limited space mm -hmm. and the fact that yeah. some of the ladies had to put the coat somewhere and cover it up, the, yeah. I believe, the machine. I, I'll buy that. Mark. And uh, I agree with that 100%. What we're going to have to do, I think, as we'll continue on, is to probably get that corner booth and fix it up for a storeroom and a closet and keep, keep stuff in. In other words, have one booth there. Well, that's the storage space. Storage space, you see. And that's a limit of some of the things that you're talking about. Uh, one other feature, I think, was by probably about the only place on the fairgrounds you get a free drink of water. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, I'm not in connection with what you just said. They're talking about the machine, the tire. That's two items that uh, you had to get up real close to see from the outside. I started on one occasion there, or one night after, you know, everything was shut down, to reach under, I had enough lumber and stuff on the back under the, you know, on the tools there. I started to summon uh, two or three from the local here, Carpenter local down there, and build another scalpel and raise that stuff mm -hmm. up, see. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's humanly impossible. It was, this was funny, and I think some of them boys got kind of hacked off at me. When we went down there to build that thing, uh, Red and uh, Howard Jones carried the apprenticeship class down yeah. there. We had about 12, 15 men down there. And then it sounded like you'd started a big uh, office building or something. <laughs> saw the buzzing. <laughs> they went up so fast, that thing, and there I stood trying to vision what we had to put up there and and decide if it was going to fit. See, and I had them tear it down three times. It went up. You could just see it going on. I said, whoop, back up. Do this, see. And, but by George, you just can't hardly know how to arrange that thing, yeah. see. I can beat this. And then Carol and Diane I got hacked right. off at me. They put something up. I said, no, we got to take that down. Yeah, they said, well, make up your cotton-picking mind, see. And after the fourth card is drawn for one of these free prizes, yeah. it's going to be a room that uh, Mr. Knight and I are going to fight over who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little problem out of the last six or eight prizes. People want you to bring it to their door. Evidently. I thought I never was going to give away one of One gentleman bottles. down at uh, Boulder Cheddar sent me a pair of pants back. 
And I never said, have tried to did fit. He didn't wear that. I just wrote a note that says, uh, sorry, better luck next time. Send him a note back and <laughs> give the pants to somebody else. <laughs> but twice in a row, twice in a row. Man. We do have some luck along with the other bad luck. Twice in a row, the person that won the suit wore the size we had. Well, I you just that. can't beat that. Mm. I thought the lady had fainted. Now, she worked at, uh, she's a practical nurse at the nursing home in McGee. I called her up, told her who I was. I said, uh, you want a suit of clothes? I thought I'd lost her. See, I said, are you still, hello, are you still alive? Yes, sir, I'm here. I says, what size suit does your husband wear? He we says, he wears a 40 regular. I says, I'm going to surprise you again. That's the size I got. <laughs> <laughs> and when I told her she had worn a suit of clothes, no string, I said, you remember been registering with us? Yes, sir. I said, you won that nice suit of clothes hanging up out of Paul's shirt. And I don't out. know that we didn't cause a divorce about the tires when you're poor, you know. The woman had to drag her husband down here to get her. Yeah. You know what the man told me? Yeah, the man said when they got out there that he could poke his fist through the top. <laughs> they had on the car. He said, how they got that car here. In other words, it's a good thing they got here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell, he just didn't, he had been drugged every step of the way down. He'd pick up them tires, his wife at once. Well, I agree yeah. with you, Marvin. There was two or three items. Well, that's how you you put the improvement over the first one. Oh, you're getting better all the time. Oh yeah. Well, hey, well, what do you want yeah. authority to proceed yeah, next? Exactly. Get, he wants Son, I'm going to be quiet. He, he wants you to do it again. All right, Granny, I'm well, going to be real quiet. Huh? I don't I think, think it's a permanent thing, man. Yeah, he done a mighty good job. In other words, we have to reserve that space well in advance, you see, and that's where we got to have the authority to spend the money. Let me say this. Most of you know it, I'm sure, but uh, we, as you know, we had an integrated uh, person staff this time, and it was real interesting to watch the APWR. See, there was just one stall from us, and uh, when the first uh, Negroes came on, was out of 30, 31 here, you know, told your mother, and I said, now watch them peck the wood with that boy, their eyes come out on stem. See, they didn't watch nobody but us. <laughs> They had a sign. Down I thought there. I figured it had a across there. On Sunday afternoon, you see, open. the fire was open from 12 to 10. <laughs> Sunday. And they had a sign closed on the Sabbath. We do not work on the Lord's Day. <laughs> Joe Mullins looked at that. He says, yeah, but them son of a bitches will shoot the hell out of that. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I was about to retail the first bag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they hadn't been there to have seen that. Him and uh, him and Joe. You, you know where Ella Henderson it is, Ella Henderson yeah. is? Oh. Well, he was, was with you. They came down and was putting up that uh, power company display. And I walked up there and was talking to him. I said, I guess you know who's just lowered down there. And he said, no. I said, APWR. I said, what the hell are they going to do? Show people how to burn crosses? <laughs> <laughs> But you just ought to read their <laughs> magazine. You just ought to you read their magazine. You just ought to read their magazine. Now, that it is something. Shows you how to fix it. Now, that's or not, that's not, bomb. that's not anarchy. Yeah, we don't it have it. They, they got to get in the law. Oh, but they, 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 they go about it in such a way that, they, well, they're telling them to stock up about three years of food and get about, I mean, I mean rounds of ammunition. <laughs> The counties are getting ready to move in and take over. They're going to contaminate all the water. Make sure you got plenty of distilled water on hand. Mm -hmm. get, get you some dynamite, some dynamite, and here's how to fix up your bombs now to protect yourself. You oh, see? that's the <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> we got a motion that the bomb arranged for, for the press move again. I so move. I'll Any discussion? That. All in favor of the motion signify to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion yes, sure. to a water. No. Um, Proceed. Proceed. There is a couple of things. Uh, Claude, uh, before we leave that, let's, yeah. uh, you didn't specify any particular space down there. Well, I think you are, uh, you've been down there two yeah. years now. You just well, you had, uh, we've had two this year. That's yeah. three. That's three this year. Two, uh, two before, actually, three actually this year. Well, actually, we needed four <laughs> this year, really. 
<coughs> you ought to saw, well, we, well, I'll tell you, we come out good on the rent because we actually had uh, that much more space rented outside where we had them bags stacked. Yeah. Did any of them get and that We couldn't have said nothing if they charged us rent on that. Charged you used to no. go outside, Marlon, no. out there. You all seen that bags. stack of stuff I, I had so. outside they were, there. That's all you could see, all around the midway. I never seen a Every woman, every child had a retail clerk <laughs> sending out to the union one of those shopping bags. That's all we saw, the full fairground. They really got advertised, didn't they? We registered Good approximately 11,500. We give away about 100 and from 150,000 up pieces of trade union material and souvenirs. I and you. I mean, we give it away. The only thing we got left is a few of the retail clerks' smaller litter bags. Just one little carton of that. Had some of our bags left. Yeah. But we, 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 we give it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they advertising for I know, you, we all know they didn't read all that stuff, but they had to read some of it because we put the souvenirs in the bag under the material, so they had to go through <laughs> that to get to the goodies. See. Uh, what a poor booth shop. Well, it's, uh, it depends on the length of the fire, Jack. It's so much uh, per space per day. Uh, the space this time, the total amount of space we had is 360 something dollars. And it depends on whether, see, it's an addition there because of the eight-day fire. Now, I don't know whether they're going to try that or not. Yeah, they had yeah. 35,000. Is that right? They had 35,000 less people through the gate this time in eight days than they had in six in 66. I think it's uh, the last two days was awfully bad weather, but we it cost us three hundred and sixty-two dollars uh, a half, I believe. We kind of had a total cost of a little under nine hundred dollars the day before. Yeah, of everything. They did. They got you the resolution. Is that right? I didn't see that. Well, you are authorized to do business again, and I assume you don't want to tie his hands. It looks like it's taking up space with four. We get that. Get that five minutes more.
Lloyd told the uh, operator the next morning, picked up the phone, she rang Mr. Frank Smith's room. <laughs> I think I remember it uh, fairly well. And the uh, <coughs> phone rang, somebody answered the phone, said, Hey, Frank, yeah. He says, You up? Yeah. He <laughs> says, You about ready or something like that? He says, uh, You about? Yeah. He says, I'm shaving. He says, well, Wait a minute. He says, Who is it? No, wait, that ain't where it happened. He said, yeah. I said, well, I'll be down. I'll meet you in the line. Yeah, meet and you hung up. And he said, okay. And I hung up, you see. And a little while the phone rang, and uh, uh, the operator wanted to know uh, if I called Mr. Frank Smith. I said, yeah. He said, what's your name? I said, Claude Ramsey. He said, well, he said he don't know Claude Ramsey. <laughs> I said, uh, well, how many Frank Smiths have you got two Frank Smiths yet? She said, yeah. I said, where are they from? And she told me. And I said, well, you, 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 wrong, you rang the wrong one. But well, that, guy, that guy was about half asleep, see. I woke him up. Frank, he got to wondering who he was going to meet, I bet. Yeah, I said, Frank. I said, are you awake? He said, yeah. I said, uh, well, I said, I've got to shave. I'll shave and meet you in the lobby in about 30 minutes. He says, okay. That's what he said, see. He's still about half asleep, I guess, see. And then when he, he hung up the phone, I then he got flamed back. <laughs> <laughs> he called the operator for to know who that was over the media, man. This tickled old Frank. Old you know, Frank, Frank's Frank's not too, yeah. he's kind of dry, but he's laughing yeah, about that. Uh, <laughs> what international union? <laughs> people do you have in mind or extended invitation? I don't know. Uh, I haven't. Uh, uh, you know, made a determination on this, so we don't want to consult with you all about it. I'd like to see Joe Keenan. Joe? I think I wrote Joe once, invited Joe down once. I think, once. I think he couldn't come. come or something. I'll make a note of that. Joe's a good man. He's much better speaker than Gordon yeah, like Freeman, him. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon, I didn't show up. Me and Al Found out from Alabama that they're just taking out one. 
Well, they didn't have one to stop. No, them. that's right. It's just the last month, and I asked them if uh, they would send us something on it. Well, Barney wrote the uh, outfit, and that's what I got. I only had it just a few days. And it's, I know it's pulling hey, something new on it. They don't tell you anything. You got to you you correspond with them a dozen times. times it looks like to get anything. See, and so. the thing too, you have to decide on that. What y'all have to decide is whether you want a unit uh, date. In other words, put everybody together and say go back to 1954. Or you won't eat individual, individual employment date. date. And that's something that hadn't been decided, so we couldn't send that off. They say it's employment. better than nothing at all. They, they figured it was, you know. Well, they just got a unit date, didn't they? They just went back a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, you're going to have you know, you got, you got a lot of material. Oh, well, I got it. It's going to take you a little while. while. It's going to take a couple of hours. 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 I'm not going to no. have the time. I don't <laughs> <know that. laughs> You're going to have to, have to go. Okay. Well, you still have. They'll still have four. Yeah. The committee Let me ask you this, Clark. You'll uh, be in on the, on the thing when it comes back up anyhow. Have you got anything else to present to the committee tomorrow morning? No, I think we took care of everything uh, that I needed you to act on, uh, to take position on. We uh, would like to report to you. We can do this as we meet again on the workshops and what where we are in that development, uh, what we're doing, uh, <coughs> and request of you that you provide us with the names of uh, Democrats in your area that you think would like to participate, whether they're in the labor movement or not. This is uh, talking about white ones now. The problem is going to be white participation. So keep this in mind. If you've got, and you got one or two in your ear over at Marley, uh, I told the YDs over at send us the uh, name, names of people they like to invite. But I know you got a Carter. You used to come to the meeting sometimes. you got people like that that we ought to invite. And all of you know people in your friends and your communities who are not members of the labor movement that might come in and participate. Oh, yeah, that. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, take it up. Um, <coughs> Paul got a letter from the manager of the fair, uh, Mr. Anderson. The Dixie National Livestock Show and Rodeo is going to uh, be here in Jackson in uh, February, I believe, 8th to the 16th. And of course, since we've been doing business with them down a couple of years, they figure they can take advantage. You know, he talks about, you know, the yeah, distinguished so, uh, Mississippi LFL. See how we really got to doing that for a contribution. And he sent us a proposed quarter page ad in the brochure they're going to get out of it. They want $45 for this thing. And, uh, it's one of the biggest in the side. It gets yeah. a lot of uh, distribution, that thing. Uh, we well, we took it out of the why don't you get hooked into it? It's bad to back out. <laughs> well, that thing got, it's got wide publication. Oh, yeah. Probably $45 well spent there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we're getting, we're getting yeah, the we got to cut off time. Some. We have to cut things from up and down. We have $25 a year to death. $25 a year to death for tickets for this and tickets for that for the orphanage. And it's a funny thing how these people do. One will call Claude, another will call me. From the same cotton picking office, see? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the that's thing. Right. They're working both sides. Well, of the and street. then they'll make out like they hadn't talked to you. Next time they call, they'll call again in a few days. If you don't watch, you'll buy the same thing twice. <laughs> that's right. That's you know, right. They do that deliberately, I think. They figure, well, they forgot, see? So I'll approach them a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I think you've acted on everything that I needed you to act. There might be something come up before you get out of here. But uh, yeah. I think we ought to retire yeah. and let them. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd like to make suggestions. Yeah. Well, we'll get this and we have a black coat. Let's see what yeah, I was going to suggest. You might want to take a coffee break. I don't think there's any need to first day in uh, <coughs> recording this meeting. Do you? Well, let's just be discussion until right. we get ready right. to decide something. Right. Right. Well, I'm in now, I brought some extra copies of these stuff, this stuff over here. I thought you might want some books, and uh, we got plenty of.